Right, so in this video, what we, what we will be doing is we'll be going over acids and bases, particularly acids, um, but their importance in talking about biochemistry. Okay, so we're going to be going over acids and bases. Okay, and we're going to talk about them specifically as far as how they apply to biochemistry. So, when we talk about them in biochemistry, acids and bases, we particularly def um, consider the Bronsted definitions. So, the Bronsted definition for an acid is a proton donor and a base the Bronsted Lowry definition is a proton acceptor okay so it's very important to keep these two definitions these two simple definitions in mind when we're talking about acids and bases so when we think about the uh, acids or bases we usually think about um, the classical reaction which is this okay so the classical reaction I'm talking about I don't know if it's really called that but it's kind of how I think about it so we think about an acid as being something carrying a proton right so this here will be the acid and if we put this in water water will be acting as the base and this is what's gonna happen so before Okay. Now, before I go on, I want to label these two really quickly. So, like I said, this HA here will be the acid, and this water here is going to act as a base. So, given that we know that this acid will be donating a proton, this H here, and a, the positive charge to the base here, which was accepted. Okay. So then, what we get then is if water is going to accept the proton, it becomes H3O plus and if the acid is going to give up the proton it it's, ends up just being A minus and the A I'm pretty certain stands for anion right because it carries that negative charge so then what we have these two species are are now considered they have two new names so now this here is carrying a proton right so now it's actually in an acid form so it's called a conjugate acid now the reason it's called the conjugate acid is because obviously because it's an acid, right? Because it's carrying that proton. But this base was protonated, gained that proton to become this conjugate acid. And this here, this anion, is simply then the conjugate base. All right. And this makes sense because now this thing can go th go and donate a proton, act as an acid, and this anion here can accept a proton and become this acid. Okay. Uh, another way to depict this, right? You don't. You can omit the water and simply write it like this. You can write it as HA, right? Just an acid dissociating into H plus and an anion. Okay. Now uh, I want to connect these really quickly, just so I can be absolutely clear. This acid, right, becomes this conjugate base here. Right, and this base here becomes this acid. Okay, that's how they're connected. <clears throat> here we obviously omit the base. We just consider the acid as being dissociate as dissociating in the water. So the water is actually still here. Um, so you just kind of write that there. Okay. Anyway, uh, what we can often do, or what we can do, is write out what's called the Ka expression. Now the Ka expression is the equilibrium constant expression, but specifically for acids. So if we write the, if you recall, just equilibrium constants and writing them back from general chemistry, you would write them as the Ka expression is equal to the product, the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So in this case, we're calling it the Ka because it's an acid association equation. So we're gonna have the concentration of the products, right, which are the H plus and the A minus. over um, the concentration of the reactants, right, which is that acid that's that's protonated still. 
Okay. Now from this here, from this Ka expression, we're going to derive what is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which will be very, very useful when it comes to thinking about um, whether or not a certain functional group is protonated or deprotonated or in the acid form or the base form. All this might not make sense just yet, but it will make sense in future videos, trust me. This is just an overview as far as how to find the henderson hasselbalch or how to derive the henderson hasselbalch equation so now once we have this what do we do okay so what we're going to do what i'm going to do is now that i have this i'm going to rewrite it over here that's really ugly <laughs> anyway so i'm going to rewrite it and in a, in a slightly different way i'm going to write it like this oops Goodness. What? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're going to have Ka equals the H plus concentration um, times the anion concentration over the undissociated acid concentration. Now what we're going to do is take the log of both sides. Okay, so we're going to take the log of this and the log of this entire thing here. Now notice here, this is the log of a product, right? So if you guys recall back in math, the log of a product, log of xy for instance, will be equal to the log of x plus the log of y. Okay, so what we get here is we get the log of the Ka is equal to the log of the H plus concentration plus the log of A minus over HA. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this log of Ka and move it over to this side and take this log of H plus and move it over to the other side. And you guys will see why in just a moment. So if I do that, they both simply just become negatives, right? So I get negative log of H plus concentration equals the negative log of the Ka concentration, oh, not Ka concentration, just the Ka, plus the log of A minus over HA. Okay, so now if you recall back to general chemistry, this negative log of H plus is defined as pH, and this negative log of Ka is defined as the pKa. So if we rewrite this uh, this equation now, what we get is we get the we get the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log. Of the conjugate base over the undissociated acid. Now, this thing here, this equation here, is now the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Henderson. Now, this equation is very, very useful in biochemistry. Um, it can tell us basically whether, like I said earlier, if a particular group is protonated or not. Um, essentially, if if we if we know, there are three there are three variables here in this equation. There's the pH, the pKa, and this ratio here between the conjugate base and the acid. So if we know, for instance, the pH and the pKa, then we can determine and solve for this ratio here. Basically, and it basically what I wanted to mention is that if you have two of these variables, you can solve for the other. So if you knew the pKa and this acid to or base to acid ratio, then you could determine what the pH is. Now uh, that may not make all the sense in the world just yet, but if you watch future videos, it'll make sense. I promise. One more thing I wanted to note before I go on, or before I end the video, um, were just a few things. So what I wanted to, to mention and have you guys recall was that uh, strong acids, right, based on that definition from earlier, if an acid is a strong acid, first of all, acids are 
proton donors. If something is a strong acid, that means it's going to be very good at donating its proton. Okay, so it's a very good proton donor. Right, so if something is a very good proton donor, then that means it's going to exist in its conjugate base form. Now, that might not make sense at, at, at hearing it the first time, but think about that for a moment. If this acid is very, very good at getting rid of its proton, then this, it won't be existing in this acid form. It'll be existing in the conjugate base form because it will have donated its proton to another species. So, um, the, often people, what they'll say is that uh, a strong acid will ionize completely. And what that simply means is that if you, you know, if you have an acid, all of it will be turned into that proton and the anion. So, so that's what a strong acid is defined as. Uh, there are six strong acids, if you remember them, HCl, HBr, um, HI, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and uh, perchloric acid. So all of those acids are very, very good proton donors, and they will exist most commonly in their conjugate base form. So for instance, an example, um, HCl, it will exist mostly as H plus and Cl minus, right? So um, that's what strong acids are. <clears throat> and what I wanted to mention in addition to that is, oops, is that strong acids have high Ka values and they have low pKa values. Let's think about this for a second. A high Ka value. Something has a high Ka value. We should look at this. We should consider this. Something has a high Ka value. That means it's going to have this number on top. This or this this value. This this entire value will be a, a large number. Does that make sense? Well, does that make sense according to this definition? If something is a very good proton donor, that's going, that means it's going to exist in its conjugate base form. So there's going to be a lot of conjugate base. In addition, it has to give up, give up its proton. So it would make sense here then that if there's a bunch of this and a bunch of this around, right? That 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 that's what a strong acid would be like, right? And there'd be very little undissociated acid around. So this number, this peak, this excuse me, this Ka num uh, number would be a very very large number. And if you take the negative log of that, it would be a very small number. Okay, so it's important to keep these two ideas in mind when thinking about strong acids. I don't really go into strong bases very much, although their definition is simply that they're very good proton acceptors. Uh, but the reason why I didn't really want to mention that is because oftentimes in biochemistry we kind of stick to talking about the Ka expression uh, and the pKa's a lot and relating them to the pH. So um, I hope that was helpful in kind of clearing things up as far as acids and bases, and I hope that was a good introduction to what we'll be talking about in biochemistry.